Beardy and the Beast, The Second Wall. This is a placeholder intro song. Welcome to The Second Wall, binge-free zone where we look at a series and discuss it in small chunks. This time we are looking at Joss Whedon's sci-fi classic, Firefly. We can be found on most podcast and social media platforms, a full list of which can be found at beardyandthebeast.com. Please watch the episode and then join Drew and I in the mess as we explore the verse. Devin. Yes? I heard that no power in the verse can stop you. It's true. <laughs> um, so, I think this episode is the episode where my love of Wash came from. Because we finally got some character from him. I don't think I have the love of Wash that I used to, but I think this might be the spark where it came from. I mean, I could see it, but technically he was kind of just the same, but amplified to me. Yeah. Well, and that's why I'm saying, like, I don't see this anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, Because at least we got some indication of character. Yeah. Um. And that character is jealous AF. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's a thing. Um, well, I mean, like discovering things, like always having been concerned about it, uh, Zoe's relationship, uh, Captain Reynolds, um, and the 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 fact that he lets the job um influence his relationship and his relationship influence the job yeah cuz those are two like in this situation those are two separate things making a suggestion about like bypassing middlemen um that would have been a when you when you live in your workplace, it's difficult to separate when that's just a between you and me, like I'm griping about my job and um I'm making an adequate so um suggestion to the first mate. Yeah. Uh and they both let that bleed through. Mm-hmm. Like Zoe should have also picked that up and um not push that through. But that being said, the fact that she even entertained it to Captain Reynolds um, means that there was some consideration there. Yeah. Like she has respect enough for Wash to push that along because it's possible that uh, Captain Reynolds would have went, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, and the, I think the, the biggest thing that is, I don't think Zoe would have thought it was a good idea. No. If, if it wasn't, but I mean, it, it it shows that at least bit of concern going both ways, even though they don't understand it. And I mean, they straight up call the this is why, you know, inner sh- inner ship relationships don't work. Yeah, or why they, or why there's issues around them, um, because yeah, it's going to bleed through. It, it, there's no way to stop it. Yeah, They're yeah, literally always with these people. Um, I think I, I find it, it's a shame that Wash just comes across as so petty and jealous that, I mean, at least it was a milk run. It was supposed to be just a milk run type job. So, you know, it wasn't hurting anything by him being the one going out in the job, but it's just the fact that he would be so jealous that he's changed all of the controls on the ship and said, no, you're taking me, even though I am not the person that you should have for this mm-hmm. in any normal circumstance. And we don't ever really see you leave the ship unless you're piloting. Like, 
there's nothing wrong with you know knowing your lane in that regards uh, but just well i said like it's nice to actually get some character i think it also hurts his character because it just shows how oblivious he is like just the fact that he thinks that there's anything between zoe and mal when yeah they literally just come across as we've been through some we've been through some things we're good friends that's Hon- it yeah the, honestly <laughs> like i mean i just because i'll forget this point if i if i don't mention it i think the relationship between zoe and mel um i think there is friendship there but yeah. because they've been through so much stuff together i think that it's not strange for her to stay um beside Smel- beside mel simply for the fact that there's no one else in the verse that she could trust more yeah um that she believes has the honor to watch her back Mm -hmm. in the same way that Mal can. And like, we don't know her backstory. She might have nowhere else to go. So the only place that makes sense is next to that person she trusts. Yeah. Um, And I agree with you um, about the point. Like it it does hurt Wash's character. The fact that he came off petty like that. Yeah. Um, It did. I've I've been thinking about this concept, like, uh like in work and in personal life and i i've i've made this comment a bunch of times um for unrelated things but it always seems to be a good analogy and it's kind of like um yeah sure it was the fact that you forgot to pick yogurt up at the supermarket is why she left you yeah no it's built up things over time right yeah um but they didn't express that well and and I think that's a big part of it too. And that is why it hurts Wash's character. If yeah. we were seeing more tension throughout, like even just little snippy things, but we we don't. Mm-hmm. Right? The, the the reaction we see is more of the I'll be in my bunk mm-hmm. reaction that we get at the end than anything else. So it uh rule of three. Yes, that was definitely there. (laughs) (laughs) Um, It's... Wash, for the most part, just feels like a character's like, well, we need to have someone be able to stay with the ship. And and it can't just be Kaylee. Honestly, I... Not not in, like, the sexuality way. I think Wash is mostly just Zoe's beard. Mm. Um, And what I mean by that is giving Zoe more character herself, because in that she'll just be the stoic, quiet uh, warrior woman Mm. that's loyal to a T and no one's more capable. And that that would be her character. Yeah. Um, But the fact that we have Wash um poking at it that's that's what makes me think that washes zoe's beard <laughs> yeah yeah and we've we've kind of said that before it's the like we have to almost look at them as one character yeah yeah and, and i think that's it it washes there to show zoe more mm-hmm. uh, yeah. and, and he does that <laughs> and i mean it is he he's a good opposite to Zoe. Mm-hmm. They're able to, excuse me, like the way that they frame it is, he is legitimately the opposite of Zoe. But so they can show something about Zoe's character by showing the inverse with Wash. Yeah, it unfortunately makes it a bit hard to see the relationship sometimes. Yeah, because they're like. What do you have in common? It's like, I go, it's like, it, in the back of my mind, I don't think there's anything in the show that has shown this, but just from a story standpoint, I go, well, Wash was the option. Yeah, yeah. Because clearly it's not Mal and it's not going to be Jane. And, and we've expressed similar things with, uh, 
a little bit with Kaylee and Simon. Mm. Right. It's, but I mean, that's going to be the nature of. Yeah. Living in a shit. Yeah. So I think, I think Simon and Kaylee might have a little bit more in common, even though it seems like they wouldn't. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, even if it boils down, I mean, we'll probably have a chance to revisit this in uh, a future discussion. Um, yeah. But just to accentuate your point, like we talk about and Kaylee believes the ship to be like a living being. Yeah. So the fact that um, Simon and Kaylee both like fix beings, I guess you could yeah. say, is a, a prime example. Yeah. Um, their awkwardness around people. Yeah. Like, whereas Wash and Zoe are definitely the opposites. Um, mm -hmm. Tam, Simon, Tam, and Kaylee um, are very similar. Yeah. Yeah. So one might be working with machines, but I mean, they're both, <clears throat> they're both fish out of water. Yep. Just one happens to be fish out of water from the big city. One happens to be fish out of water from the small, small, small no-name town. Yeah. But, but they've still at least got that in common. Mm -hmm. Them, you know, the doing a crime thing isn't their nature. And we see that. Um, Grout, even though you know, you know, Simon is obviously a criminal mastermind, <laughs> um, <laughs> as book pointed out. <laughs> I, I do like that through Wash, they ex did explore uh, Mal and Zoe's relationship a bit more, mm -hmm. flush it out, and it's very much just flushing it out. It's stuff that's obvious there. Um, we've already mentioned it. Like we knew that they trusted each other. We knew they had each other's back. And well, um, really, what know, Walsh was just a proxy for the audience asking the questions that we would have asked. Yeah, um, but I think it's done very well. It's like, no, like this is that type of trust. It's again, it's more like you know, I, you know, brothers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it it's that close type of relationship with them um you know we get a little bit more about what happened with them in the war like why they're always cutting apples yeah um that's the scene that's always stuck with me i always thought that scene was a lot earlier than it was <laughs> um but i mean like they've been through enough that you know literally everything they had and fought for crumbled around them like they know they have each other and have had each other for you know a decade uh, it was nice to see that expressed and they did it in a very interesting interesting way through the um torture scene uh because it you know mal is explaining that the trust and such around there but also egging on wash to pre help prevent wash from breaking yeah like that is that's layering the text and subtext and explanation in, in such a good way um that it it sticks out and you know at least wash can recognize that that's what was happening there <laughs> Well, Amir's like the dialogue style too, like not talking, like not just doing name, rank, number. Mm -hmm. um, had they done that would be very different to say like the Weed Nest style of writing and shows. Yeah. So the fact that they're talking about something completely unrelated to what's going on next to them is yeah. very on par and it accentuated the conversation quite well mm -hmm. and it's i think it shows something with mal's playfulness mm. with it as well um because like there's one thing that goes like this is just how we're getting through the torture yeah yeah but it's another thing to go afterwards after they're patched up 
and play on what was said during that torture. <laughs> well, I mentioned this uh, two episode, episodes ago. Um, Mel is such a good commander, and I'm going to call him a commander in this case because that was his uh, previous title. Um, he knows exactly how to communicate with, I guess, his underlings or his charges um, to make them do what he wants. Mm -hmm. And I saw that as Mel communicating with Wash in the exact way that would resolve the issue. Yeah. Because it had not yet been resolved. Yeah. Um, so that playfulness, like, also kind of framed um, my perception of Mel when it comes to that as a character trait. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it definitely felt like it was put to rest at mm -hmm. the, when he did do that. So it's, again, it's, it's amazing. Like, they, they did similar stuff with Jane previously where there was just so much said in a couple of lines and you know it, it continued here um just with different characters which mm -hmm. is always good um to kind of hop in for a moment jane mm. um first of all i don't i don't think um mal told zoe about jane nope uh, her reaction seemed genuine when it came to like uh, why Jane was being so generous. Mm -hmm. um, like she didn't trust the motive behind it because she didn't understand the backstory, right? There was no context for her. Yeah. So it was like, why is this person who I see as hoarding wealth or being greedy um, being so generous all of a sudden? Yeah. The reaction made um, sense. It was just an interesting thing that I noted that. I think it shows that there's a reason why people trust Mel. Mm. And that is an example of it. Um, it's interesting though. I think like it definitely needed to be there. The, the whole him getting the apples and everything and sharing his cut mm -hmm. because you know, there needed to be consequences. I have, one slight issue with it. Okay. Um, and it, it's because of when they took, when Nishka had them, and like as soon as Zoe realized that's what had happened, mm -hmm. you know, they went in and they were literally getting every scrap of cash together. It almost, Jane giving his cash in is almost. Uh, the meaning behind that is almost pulled away because it's in the back of my mind, I can go, well, of course he's giving his cash because he still owes Mal for, you know, not spacing him as opposed to like if the Niska thing and the Apple thing were separated by an episode, I'd be able to go. Jane also cares about Mal and just throwing it in. It, it's a minor thing, but the the thing is, I, I would agree, but there was an acting choice um, that followed it, yeah. which kind of redeemed it for me. So he was kind of, he was like quite close handed while he was taking the elastic off the cash. Mm -hmm. he, he threw it onto the table and then he turned away and he didn't, like he didn't wait for any acknowledgement that he contributed. Yeah. Um, which I would expect Jane to do. Yeah. Like, not so much, but like something along the lines of I need a receipt for that. Yeah. I do agree that he would have contributed it anyways, mm. but there was something that did redeem it to the smallest degree, mind you, yeah. um, that uh, via that acting choice. Yeah. Yeah. Like, from the acting, everything is like, I understand it. I believe it. It's just, yeah, it's, it's just the proximity of it that I could see. Yeah, yeah people not paying attention it could take away from that some oh for especially sure especially when you see everyone else doing it so yeah and yeah that's what i mean like i agree except for this tiny bean right yeah um I, and we we knew that jane was gonna go anyways yeah um i i don't that's that scene where um washington story were gearing up 
Um, I think Jane was being contrarian because he hadn't been asked. Mm-hmm. Yes, he should have been the natural person to bring along, but there was at no point did they go, so are you coming? Yeah. Like I he had to <laughs> <You'd> <laughs> show up at the end, all geared up and be like, what? All right. So this whole rescue thing actually makes me question so many things about Zoe. And I don't think it was intentional, but I they did a few things for jokes that they shouldn't have. Because, again, it's one of these things that ends up undermining her character. They just said, sure, Wash saying, yep, I'm going. And, you know, that little tiny, tiny, almost Derringer-type pistol. It's like, yep, locked and loaded. Yeah, yeah. No, it was, it was a funny moment, but. You're right. Why didn't she ask Jane? Jane should have been the first person there. Right? Even, even Book has shown a bit of competence even before, yeah. you know. He goes in more in this episode, right? So immediately have those there. And then at when they actually do get to Mal and Rescue, it's like Zoe going, it's like, oh no, this is something the captain needs to do by himself. I'm like, no, that's something Wash would say, not Zoe. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just, why? It, it, it's such a weird choice. And both of them. There was a on the on the other other hand, there was a few things that reinforced her, like strategically. Mm. Um, I I don't see why she would have allowed Kaylee to exit the ship. Mm. I I would have expected like her to be in the bay and be like. You're the last line sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. And then, because he was definitely uncomfortable looking, maybe with Simon. Yeah. Um, but that being said, um, strategically, her and Jane were up front and they were staggering going back and forth at mm -hmm. doors. Um, and Wash's role was actually just to watch their back. Yeah. He was always looking backwards and listening to them, which, like, I appreciated because it, like, that's a, a decision the commander would make um, in that situation that, like, we have, we need to continue pushing forward. So we need someone watching the back, and it's probably going to be the la least fierce uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, ally. Yeah. And, and her bringing Wash along for that, that doesn't bother me. Like, no, it makes even sense. Though we, yeah. Even though we don't see him being much of a combatant, he never came across as incapable. Right. It's just not his role. Yeah. Um, well, so, after the primary combat force, he's probably the next um, able yeah. that they know of. Yes. Finger quotations. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, those choices like are fine tactically. So, so you said, like, that's why it's so odd because we clearly see her being a commander as well. Yeah. She clearly has tactics. She clearly knows what it is. It's just, and I, I can even allow them having Kaylee and Simon up that little bit further because it's not like they were on the station. They were just at the door to the station. Yeah, yeah I get you. You're going to have that. You're going to just have better lines of sight with more cover. It, it makes without them potentially breaching. Right? The, the, all, all of that makes sense. It's just why would you say, oh, no, the captain's got to do this himself? You know what he's just been through. <laughs> You see him struggling over this. It's like, no, take the guy out. Because we don't see that anywhere else in the show. Well, it's the thing, like, it was as in place as it would have been if they walked into the room. He had the pain device on his chest and was strapped to a table. And they looked down at him and they're like, no, he's got to do, he's got to do this himself. Yeah. It's like, what? No. <laughs> this is a rescue op. It's a rescue op. And again, it's not the tone of the show. Well, like, in the... I, th I think the major problem, um, there, there's a more macro problem here. Mm. Um, it wasn't even thematic to the episode. Yeah. Nothing about this was like, um,
choking down that pride mm. and okay. relying on others for help like that that wasn't the barrier that they were getting over yeah um and I might have given it some leeway if that was like reoccurring um, theme in the episode, mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't. So it just it was so out of place. It, it, yeah, and like they they throw in comedy like that. Like I think one of the best examples for for how they kind of throw in that type of jab was from Shindig. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm a better man than you. Well, I'm great. <laughs> not totally bad yeah yeah <laughs> right right like well they even and they yeah sorry they the reference to that in this episode was precious mm. <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm over my sword fighting phase i swear yeah <laughs> it, it, it's yeah it's so weird i understand they did it for a, a laugh it just it fell flat yeah um, and again, has that unfortunate aspect of undermining Zoe's character. I don't think it was intentional. I think the only thing was the joke, but that's what it did. Well, the bit, the big unfortunate thing there is it's like, if you're not watching it with a more analytical mind, like actually, um, looking for how characters are developing consistency, uh, thematic repetition, you probably wouldn't even notice that. And you'd have been like, oh, that's funny. Yeah. But as soon as you put any type of critical eye on it, it's just like, wait a minute. Yeah. We've seen and, that in movies. Uh, oh, yeah. TV shows. Yeah. It, it, it's something that, unfortunately, I'm seeing more and more. Yeah. <laughs> See, this This is why you got to watch um, foreign uh, reality television series. Is <laughs> because <laughs> if if it's this crazy dance competition between like six different crews and they gotta go through various accomplishments like you're not looking for like uh well i mean i guess in an individual performance you'd be looking for like thematic repetition characters etc but um, yeah you're not looking for that kind of consistency throughout the entire series yeah it is it's very true <laughs> <laughs> and it, it it's one of those things where it's it's exasperated by the fact that this show is kind of the, one of those shows that sits in the middle of serial and episodal yeah right because it's right at the cusp when we started getting more serial sci-fi and uh so i i think that's where some of that issue comes with is they're still looking at it. it's like oh yeah it's episodal so it doesn't matter so much and everything turns out the same in the end because that's how episodal shows work <laughs> i think it's interesting that i couldn't quite tell was wash surprised that zoe picked him oh no the thing the thing is that that was a that was a humor that's an example of a humorous moment that was done well in context with the character and made perfect mm. sense yeah. Nishka was never going to give up Mal. No, that's true. Um, but Nishka also didn't know the relationship of Wash and Zoe. Yeah. So, um, knowing that Malcolm Reynolds is the one that betrayed him, but is also probably the most important person on board. Yeah. Um, finger quotations, because no one sees my camera um, <laughs> um from his point of view it would have been an intriguing question mm. but from a character point of view consistency in what we know the things we know that nishka doesn't the the joke of him oh i'm sorry you were gonna make me choose right yeah like just made oh, perfect sense that. Too. that joke was absolutely fantastic yeah like it was um, <laughs> see that that's my example of being like on theme in context and making sense yeah um like even even the ear thing mm -hmm. the continuation of that comedy sketch yeah or period yeah. there the the one thing that i have a problem with that scene I guess it was the Hail Mary. Never mind, I just talked myself out of it. To, for context of what 
the entire conversation that just happened in my head was it was I was dissatisfied because Zoe came in and then got wash and it seemed like she had full intention to go back for Mal. But then I realized it was the Hail Mary to get them both back with the cash and then going back for Mal was the um the obvious choice because no no man left behind. Yeah, it would. Yeah, it would have happened anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I, I went. Yeah. I'm I'm mad because of this. Oh wait, I'm dumb because I was mad. Yeah. Um, I like how much they had to. Cause we had no context for how much money they had actually pulled together. It's like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, no, this is five times the amount of this massive job. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I mean no, like Zoe's choice for wash, no question, not questioning that decision at all. Um. I think Wash had a little bit of disbelief, but it's mm. hard to tell because you know torture. That that's more what I was. That little Going scene, the... that little scene where he's like, "No, Mel," and then he looks back, and then you see Mel like in pain, just going, "No." Yeah. And then the whole like Shashan, I was like, yeah. "That was a nice little unspoken thing." Yes. But it also cost <laughs> that also cost Mel his ear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but. <laughs> they got a good doctor on board. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, yeah, that decision made, makes perfect sense in many ways. Like, if anyone's going to be able to survive that bit of time when they actually go and plan the proper rescue up, it's going to be Mal. Definitely not Wash. Mm-hmm. Is right. Nishka would have never let Mal go. Exactly. That was obvious as well. Like, speaking of good doctors, mm. what about good doctors' sisters? <laughs> <laughs> so it was I, I like how they did this that they played with the no you're finally waking up uh, line from the previous episode here because this is the first time we really see her play um, and again just showing how well I think Summer Cloud does with as River, like that moment of clarity, and then just her being able to describe what was happening as she could feel herself slipping again. Mm. Um, like it, it actually ties into a lot of what you were saying, where she couldn't find the right metaphors and such. Mm. And you kind of saw that happen just within that conversation. Yeah, it started devolving, going from something more accurate and poignant to something more meta descriptional. Yeah. And uh, analogous. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think that was just really well done, like to, to be able to switch mind state like that within a scene, uh, is it's impressive. Like that. Yeah. Well, even, um, even vocal tone, um, some timbre, some, uh, like vocal vibration, vibrato kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and I'd, I'd, I'd like to think there was even a pacing of the words mm-hmm. where, at, like, at this point for uh, Summer Glau, I'm, like, completely turned away, tur- turned away, turned around from yeah. my position in the first episode. Mm-hmm. Um, where, in this case, we had her cycle through three characters, I would say, in the yeah. course of a sentence. Um, and three emotional states and did it seamlessly. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And, and like, I felt her distress mm-hmm. and, and it, it's again, one of these small things I kind of really loved it at the end of it. Like, even as she's going into that distress and when she says, oh yeah, it was your bed I threw up in and just, yep, my sister and just being able to bring a smile. <laughs> Yeah. With that, like it, it, I don't know. It's like she does very well at like making me believe her mental state and kind of pulling me into what she might be going through. Mm-hmm. Uh, and well, what's interesting too is um, the start of the episode versus the ending of the, excuse me, the uh, the start of the episode compared to the ending of the episode mm. 
where they directly say like they cut into her brain for very specific purposes and then uh the firefight scene at the end mm. where she's playing she takes just a glance and then like while looking away and like her hand pointing behind her effectively yeah. uh shooting three dudes yeah and that look i think they were killing blows I'm assuming they were. Yeah, g given the context, I uh, they they made you feel that they were killing blows. Yeah. Um, I'm sad that they introduced a. The the show isn't one where they introduce a concept and then immediately uh, expand upon it in the way that they did this, even at beginning to the end of the episode. But I'll give it to them because it gives me more questions. Mm-hmm. Um, so instead of, it's more, uh, a description of the question rather than an answer of the question, I guess you could say. Yeah. You're like, oh, okay. Wait, what did they do? Like, what is she capable of? Yeah. It's an evolution yeah. of the question. That's a better way to put it. Yes. Well, again, it, it, it's that, as I said, it's that hybrid, uh, mm. serial versus episodal, right? Like. Um, the way they did this would not have worked if it was a purely um, episodal show. Yep. But because it's serial, or it's got enough serial elements, knowing that more will probably happen in the next few episodes. Mm -hmm. And we have a history of that throughout the show already. So um, at least the, there's no intention of leaving that hanging. Just leaving it hanging for now. Mm -hmm. Um and like this, again this kind of just shows river's mental state when she does that um you know no power in the verse stop me like she was saying that to be reassuring i know she was trying to say that to kaylee to be reassuring you know I, 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 that, that's how i read it um i but I, it doesn't come across that way and and i'm going with that more because based off of like her interactions with book she should say just kind of similar things like that just getting with the no filter yes but i just had a thought mm -hmm. i haven't convinced myself on this but i'm just throwing that out there because it's an interesting thing so when she when she was um having a bit of a breakdown because she was like coming off of the drugs that she was on that was prescribed by Simon, right? Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that she said was uh, playing at being a real girl. Mm -hmm. I believe that's the exact wordage. Yeah. Um, the thing is, her proper... Well, not proper. That's not right. Her actual mental state is... Um, what we see when she's not um, on these medicines. Yeah. The medicines are allowing her to function like she was a real girl, which it, because I don't have a lot, I don't have a better term for it. I'll just say, well, she's high. Um, yeah. And I don't mean in a um, recreational drug way. Yeah. Um, so when she picked up that gun, shot those dudes, and then said, no power in the verse can stop me, she was effectively high and playing at being a real girl. Mm. So what I'm thinking is that statement is the least representative of uh, River. Yeah, uh, and I think that's where I was going with that. I think that's where, where I was meaning like she was trying to reassure Kaylee. Mm. And and again, it's just because of the callback, mm. right? Kaylee won the apple. They were having a good time. No power on the verse can stop me. Laugh about it and move on. And I, I think that's what... Well, she was still playing like she was, was in the same, same attitude, right? Yeah, like, exactly. I, I agree with that. Um Give such dark tones <laughs> yeah it's it's just like i'm convincing myself here that 
Um, though I agree with you, I'm conv- convincing myself that um, Simon's endeavors will have and never will have like fixed or actually like helped River. Mm. No. No, I don't think that's the case. That's because what Simon will do will help River, but it's chronic, right? Um, so something I haven't talked about. Like I'm ADD, mm. uh, and I can tell you, like the the way. River was kind of describing that fogginess. I, yeah. I, I have some, I have some insight to that because I can tell, like I can tell when my ADD medications are wearing off. Yeah, because I get that same type of of cloudy aspect. That doesn't mean that the meds aren't making me better. Mm-hmm. It just means that I always have to take them. Yeah, yeah. And and that can be that same thing that happens with River. It might get to a point where she gets better coping mechanisms and doesn't need them as much, but. Well, that's the one wow. thing that she's really missing is um, the so there's the medicine to make her able to communicate and cope, but then there's like she's missing that other factor, someone to talk to, um, someone to strengthen strengthen those coping mechanisms, yeah, and help develop them. She is she is definitely not in the right environment. <laughs> For her. I kind of disagree. Like I, I can see where you're coming from, but I kind of disagree. Um, I think this is too early for any of that stuff to come through. That's true. Uh, because overall, they've been nothing but supportive of River. Mm-hmm. All right, she's going to get those coping mechanisms, be it a conversation with book or being able to play with Kaylee like a real girl. Um, those things will come with time, but they still had that shipment. So this is like maybe a month since they got the scans tops. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so, uh, yeah, I just think that's an aspect of the time isn't there Mm -hmm. uh, yet. It does make you worry that the, um, the medicine that River will be given will be from Simon's point of view. Hmm. So how does River seem better to Simon, like from a personality way? Mm. Um, Because he very much doesn't know what he's in right now. But I mean, honestly, given enough time, I think Simon could because he's supposed to be uh, near genius level, whereas his sister is genius level, right? Yeah. Um, And Simon is smart enough to know that about his sister so if his sister goes and says this isn't working mm-hmm. she is going to go no I, it's not just trust in what i've done it's yeah 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 I, um, i'm gonna take that feedback properly it's not well, like, look, one thing that i've liked is they've actually expressed upon that mm-hmm. um and river's trust in simon yeah um where she's like, no more medicine, no more medicine, no more needles, whatever. And he's like, no, it's okay. You're you're yeah. with me now? Like, it's, it's a nice relationship building thing. Yeah. And speaking of relationship building. <laughs> um, throughout this entire series, there has not really been a time where Anara came off as disheveled. Mm-hmm. She's usually well prepped, uh, primped up. Her hair is nice, even when she's upset. Um, she usually has um, like makeup or something on that sort of thing, right? Yeah. Um, but that end scene, um. Completely disheveled, bags under the eyes, hair completely a mess. Really makes you wonder how much she was worrying worrying about Mal. I don't worry. I I, I don't wonder. (laughs) (laughs) Um, It's 
a great um again it's just a great small moment without having to say anything that just reinforces what we've seen mm -hmm. right so so there's no question about that um you know you stack that with the scene of you know just them showing the ear and you see both kaylee and and are completely recoiled from it um like it's like it, it makes perfect sense um i can't i can't remember the image isn't right in my head anymore i can't remember only one of them looked back again i don't think i don't think it was anara that looked back mm. after they turned away i think anara stayed looking away um but i can't quite remember and i didn't remember to write that down even though i noted it at the time <laughs> um it's just again these little character moments and the second it's like you know knowing that anara like immediately went to one of her clients and asking for help like i mean that's got to be like not normal practice for her. well i mean especially like someone so high up in the political sphere of that planet right yeah like uh we didn't get much with anara's interaction but just again those little bits they just did so much with them mm -hmm. um uh, yeah, you, you can again, and it's so interesting because their relationship, like the Mal and Anara's relationship, I, I never get the will they, won't they feeling. But again, it's just that deep respect, deep caring. I do believe that they love each other, even if it's not with yeah. them together, but they've just continually shown it. Um, and I almost wonder if that's why. Inara was a little hesitant having Mal meet the counselor. Um, just because I don't think he wanted her. I don't think she wanted his view of her to change more. Yeah. Well, this kind of too, that the, the, the repeating theme in this episode that we've kind of spot out before was a whole lot foggier than it usually is. Mm -hmm. Um, but I saw it as like the job bleeding through mm -hmm. or personal life into the job, job into the personal life. Um, yeah. and you can kind of see that when it came to an R and a client and Mal, I mean, obviously you could see that in the Zoe Mal wash thing. Yeah. Um, and to some it's reaching, it's very reaching to some uh, respect you could also kind of like pin a paradigm of rim river the medicine and the gunfight mm. but it's very far reaching someone could make an argument but i'm not <laughs> awake enough for it i have another slight theme that i think will tie the river gunfight one mm -hmm. um but I'll, I'll let you continue with your oh no i'm pretty much done yeah. all right um I agree that's the majority of the theme, but yeah. I also think the just the idea of trust is a big thing in this one here. Mm. Um right, the 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 bleed issues that we're having is a it's a consequence of a lack of trust. It's a consequence of a lack of trust. And what we see how I tie that in with River is um Kaylee and River's relationship is fundamentally changed at this point. Yes. Right. It, it, it's very clear. Kaylee's always kind of trusted River, tried to be like a big sister type character to her. And just that look at the end is, I can't be that anymore. Mm -hmm. Like you, you could see that. Um, I think I'm going to go with fear. Well, and I think, I think you're on it. I think that's a better uh, overarching theme. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think that's that's well put because um uh even the description of Shen Yu and like holding over the volcano's edge is a representation of trust or breaking trust. Yeah. Um uh even down to the little moments like um you knew Jane was going to come in, you just wanted to be asked. Yeah. Um 
everyone saying that like Mal would do this for me. That's even kind of a representation of that, the family trust that they have going. And having that broken trust at the end when so much other trust has been established. Mm-hmm. So that that um, occurrence with River and Kaylee is like, is that sour note or that bitter note? Yeah. On the tail of something very sweet. Yeah. There's a nice little um, punctuation on the episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it leaves a sting. It's like, oh, how is this one getting repaired? Mm-hmm. Right, and, and it doesn't feel like it's going to be repaired by someone buying a bunch of apples for everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess at this point here, because Kaylee's the only person who knows too, right? Like, she clearly hadn't said anything yet. Um, so, well, River's woken up. <laughs> and now we get to see the consequences. <laughs> um. It was nice to see the entirety of the crew um, grab arms. Like, again, you'd never expect to see, you know, Kaylee and Simon um, picking up guns. <laughs> well, I mean, I expect it more of Simon now. Yes. Um, I mean, I don't expect him to be good with the gun or make yeah. the right choices, but... Um... There's a lot of reasons, be uh, be them interpersonal or even meta or even strategical, to like his existence, why he yeah. would pick up a gun. Um, but I think for time, I think there was something for time. Um, I think if there was more time, they wouldn't have had Kaylee bring up a gun. She would have had some type of more overarching, like mechanical plan. Like much the, like the um, airlock like the mule yeah. yeah like there would have been something more than that yeah. like her um breaching doors from on the ship mm-hmm. um so that they could go through you know one one section by one section like that would have made a whole lot more sense to me yeah um not that i don't believe kaylee would pick up a gun i just don't it's antithetical uh, to her character I believe, so I think it worked really well for her character. Mm. Um, I, I don't think it was antithetical. And the reason for that is I do believe Kaylee would do anything for her captain. Yeah. And if that meant going to arms, that would mean going to arms. Or at least she thinks that will mean going to arms. Yes, yes. So it doesn't surprise me that she did arm herself and did prepare to fight, but couldn't. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's not antithetical to her character. Because she never pulled the trigger. I just... The the way that they build the story. Like, I I agree with you fundamentally, but the way that they build the story usually um, for Mm this... um, would be to allow her to take action without taking up arms because her holding the gun though she would is not it's like it, um two colors I think was, that do not complement each other I, I think if it was yeah i guess sorry i think you're saying time like episode time yeah but i think now you're talking but now i think you're talking planning time they just if she had like planning time to be able to do something I, I don't think they had much time to make a plan. Oh, I like. I wouldn't put. I wouldn't like. In this hypothetical, I wouldn't put it past her to be able to do something. It's just the situation they put her in. Um, yeah. I don't think it was the right situation for a character. I think it was. It was just a lead up for the river interaction. Uh, I think that was the long term term part of it. Um, I, mean, I think the other aspect of this is let's go to the shun yu quote Mm. that was brought up many times you know it's when you're over the volcano that you'll see who the real person is Mm. and i mean that was something throughout this as well right like um so i think kaylee like having the gun and and arming up to go to her captain because that's who she thinks she thinks she'll be there for the captain as well and 
she'll stand with the rest of the crew as well mm-hmm. um when push comes to shove but then when she's actually over the volcano we see that that's not the type of person she is and she can't mm-hmm. right um so i see what you're saying i think it would have been neat to see her try to have a different way and it'd be something that'd be amazing to see in the future but i didn't mind it i didn't like it but yeah, yeah. different strokes yeah, it, yeah it, it's it's not the best use of her but i think it was in character unlike you know some of the other character stuff that we've talked about uh, <laughs> um i'm sorry i mean Overall, um, to recap the character moments, we we'll both mm-hmm. agree on Zoe, uh, the, at least that end part. Yeah. Um, we agree yet disagree on Kaylee. And I think we disagree on Jane. Um, I don't think we disagree with Jane. I think... Again, it, it wasn't an issue with Jane as a character, as with the acting. It was like the writing. It, it was just the writing. It was just, yeah. it was a shame to see those two things because just, I think someone watching it casually wouldn't necessarily pick it up. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, that's that's cool. the only issue there. Um, the, um, I think, oh, we haven't even really touched Simon and Book yet. <laughs> um, um book again just it's it's more the same things it's like there's clearly something else there he hmm. knows how to handle a gun he knows exactly what he's doing um well they definitely show there. that he has training uh they've just yeah. reinforced that i mean it was yeah. 50 fisticuffs beforehand and now it's mm-hmm. like rather fuzzy about the kneecaps <laughs> well yeah well firing accurately at the hip which is you know for show um, but also when he went down to a knee, um, at the doorway, the reason why he would go down to a knee at the doorway is because they expect you at head, head height. Yeah. They won't expect you below head height. Yeah. Um, and also, but he aimed for the shot and he moved his head, but he took the shot. Like he didn't dodge the bullet is in the air. He predicted where the guy was going to shoot. Yeah. That's a little bit more yeah. than uh, hunting rats. Yeah. I, I may not have shot things, but I know one big thing is, uh, you know, there's a reason why you aim for the center of the mass mm. because it's the biggest target. And he had no issue aiming for the kneecaps. <laughs> <laughs> True. Like that is like, there's so much more here. And again, Zoe and um jane immediately understand this because they ask for book to come for backup oh speaking of i was sad to see zoe pull not squeeze mm. <laughs> when she pulled out the two handguns like yeah. they were wiggling back and forth as she fired <laughs> i'm just like mm. yeah that was a hundred percent a rule of cool yeah, Not well, a. well, the, the I mean, the rule doesn't make sense, but it was the fact, like, how she fired them. Yeah. Um, I, I, it seemed like they didn't give her, like, basic firearms training. It was just like, yeah. do this because it's cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, lots of lots of questions about book, mm-hmm. and here's hoping they totally explain it in the TV show. Oh yeah, I'm sure they. Yep, they totally will. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, the last part of I guess I want to talk about is um, Simon. Um, I think this is going to be fairly quick. Um, I think it just goes to show my my growing respect for his character. Mm-hmm. It's like um, as a doctor who is someone who is you know. Not supposed to take a life. The fact that he did did arm himself, did take the shot, did think that he hit something, and 
seem to be mostly okay with that. I, I, I think it goes. No, I. I don't think we were put in the position that we could assume that he was most okay with it because he was never given the chance to react, come to grips with, et cetera, like taking a life. Mm. And that was interrupted by the very strategic comment by Shepard Book where like, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure you have it. (laughs) Yeah. Um, That's fair. We didn't get. But I get what you're saying, like what you're describing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that wasn't. That was yeah. just like one of the components because the rest, yes, I 100% agree. Like the fact that he would, to save a life, take up arms and be put himself in the position where he could take a life, especially when I believe he did fire the weapon. So yes. at any point he could have taken it. Yeah. I would have liked to see more hesitation. There was no acting there, no mm-hmm. acting hesitation. And that. Honestly, Kaylee was behind him. Mm. So at what point, even someone who takes the Hippocratic Oath and has dedicated them to saving a life is going to hesitate when not only is he trying to save someone, but he's also protecting the person behind him that he cares about. Like, um, there was just like flat, flat. I mean, it was two seconds but it was flat acting in those two seconds mm-hmm. that tore me from it. Uh, yeah, I, I can, I can see that. I think in my mind, I'm stacking that up with um, the other situations. Oh yeah. yeah. Like this, that sometimes been around. So it didn't bother me so much that it, it there wasn't the hesitation there because it's progression already seen. Yeah. It's a progression of, him standing on the pyre, him standing up to the um, to the guards, mm-hmm. right? It, it's it's solidifying in my head that even though he is a doctor, he's a man that's like, no, he will step up and protect and do what needs to be done. It's because he's in, 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 he's yeah. beginning <laughs> to realize that things are a might bit fuzzier out on the edge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, um. I was never actually all that keen on this episode, but I like it more. Um, I think it's stronger looking at it from a more analytical point of view. Mm-hmm. Uh, even with the like the very the various failings regarding like Zoe Niska and some yeah. of that, um, it seemed almost throwaway when you watch it casually. Mm-hmm. It makes me wonder. I think I think the next one is um it's gonna be interesting. I remember liking it, so will I have the opposite <laughs> when it comes out? Uh let me just double check, make sure it's the one I think it is. Oh no, it's uh it's a different one. Okay. Which is our next one? Uh yeah, trash. Trash. All right. Um, which, given how this series has been so far, where ones I liked previously failed to live up to my expectations, where ones I didn't like previously or seem a bit stronger, um, this one might come out quite ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll definitely be interesting to, to see where it goes. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Hey. Thanks again for huddling around the second wall with us here tonight. Join us next time as we continue our discussion of Firefly. Please join the conversation in the comments, on social media, or at our Discord, where we would love to get your thoughts. And of course, if you like what we do, please share us with your friends. 